So a couple of days ago, there was an article that was posted by Axios, and it was about an internal email from Matt Booty. And it was framed in a way that they were talking about the Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition. And essentially, Matt Booty in that email was saying that they were purchasing Activision Blizzard to put Sony out of business. Now, after that was officially put out on Twitter, it got redacted in the sense that it was revealed that the email was from 2019. And they were not referring to Activision Blizzard because obviously this was far before the acquisition or even the talks of purchasing Activision Blizzard had occurred. Now we officially can see exactly what Matt Booty said in that email. My video previously talking about the report, I was really interested in what he said. And we have this here from The Verge and we can see everything that Matt Booty has said. The article is Microsoft is ready to go spend Sony out of business to strengthen Xbox. So here is the email itself. We'll read through it. We'll break down as we go through the stuff here that Matt Booty says. So first of all, it starts off by saying, thanks for sharing a lot to digest. We'll read it in detail, obviously referring to something. He was responding to something. And this is an email from Matt Booty to Tim Stewart. And as we know, Tim Stewart is the Xbox CFO. So the person out there that understands the money, the business, all the type of stuff who has the ability to go out and spend these $70 billion or at least give the okay that, hey, we can spend this $70 billion and there's a chance that we will be able to get a return on the investment. And Matt Booty says here, a different view to the general view below might be that we, Microsoft, are in a very unique position to be able to go spend Sony out of business. And that is the first sentence here that I would say for most people are going to read that in and say that this is a very damning sentence for what Microsoft goals are, what Xbox's goals are, which would be to just use their unlimited war chest of money because it's a trillion dollar company and try to foreclose Sony. Now he continues on here and says, if we think that video game content matters in 10 years, we might look back and say, totally would have been worth it to lose 2 billion or 3 billion in 2020 to avoid a situation where Tencent, Google, Amazon, or even Sony have become the Disney of games and own most of the valuable content. And right there, he's saying that Xbox has an opportunity with the money that they have to not become one of these companies that is just a subscription service or a smaller player in the game in the video game market, which is the biggest medium out there when it comes to entertainment. He even mentions things like Hulu or CBS All Access that are trivial players in the space. And they can actually go out there and make acquisitions and essentially become the biggest company out there when it comes to having the most valuable content in the gaming industry, which when you refer back to his first sentence, he understands here that Sony is the player that has very, very valuable content. And he kind of gets into it later on in the email. He says, for example, it is practically impossible for anyone to start a new video game streaming service at scale at this point. What content do you base it on? Things like Hulu and CBS All Access will be trivial players in the space. In games, Google is three to four years away from being able to have a studio up and running. And we all know what happened with Google. They launched Stadia. They tried to launch games and it failed. They just weren't able to be able to. It is very hard, obviously, to get into the gaming industry. That's why we don't see too many players in it besides the main ones as the main players like Nintendo, Xbox, and Sony. Whereas if you look at the streaming services out there for video, for movies and TV shows, there are just so many. Netflix is the major player and then there are all these little ones under it. But with gaming there really isn't that there there really isn't those smaller players under xbox nintendo and sony when it comes to really getting into the console gaming the AAA gaming and being the platform where people go out and play their games obviously pc as well and, and valve but it continues here it says amazon has shown no ability to execute on game content content is the one moat that we have in terms of a catalog that runs on current devices and capability to create new sony is really the only other player who could compete with game pass and we have a two-year and 10 million sub lead. If we reverse course on day and date, it's going to be hard to convince folks that things like Mixer or xCloud have much of a chance of surviving scrutiny either. So two big things here. First of all, 
He recognizes Sony in terms of being the only other player right now that could compete with content for a subscription service. Now, you can argue Nintendo has that content too, but Nintendo hasn't even hinted at wanting to get into the subscription service with their first party games. Sony, on the other hand, they were anticipating probably at some point would, and we've seen them do it, just not to the same extent as Xbox because they don't put their games in there day and date. But they do have the new PlayStation Plus. There are first-party Sony games within that subscription service. And I do think at some point they will be putting in their first-party games, which is why Sony right now is on the hunt for acquisitions, why they made the Bungie acquisition, and why they're going very hard on games as a service because they know they need to be able to stimulate their subscription service with enticing first-party content to get people to sign up to PlayStation Plus over Xbox Game Pass. Because with day and date on Xbox Game Pass, with the amount of studios they have... With the upcoming acquisition of Activision Blizzard, if it does go through, it is going to be almost impossible for a lot of these other companies out there to be able to compete at the same level as Xbox Game Pass if they don't start putting in first-party content. Sony will have that ability if they do continue to grow, but they just aren't doing it right now, which is why you think about it, it is probably the main reason why they don't want this deal to go through. They don't care about exclusivity. That's apparent. It's not actually about Call of Duty. It's about the fact that they know when it comes to the future of gaming, as Matt Booty is saying here, they have a huge lead when it comes to subscription and where gaming is going and having more content than Sony that Activision Blizzard is going to make it much harder for Sony to be able to catch up. So that's why they want to stop this deal. And the whole thing here when it comes to day and date, it's great that he makes it known that reversing course on day and date wouldn't be a good decision. They were obviously considering it. They were probably looking at their numbers. Maybe it wasn't as profitable as they wanted it to be. It is profitable now based off of what we have heard from Xbox and Phil Spencer, but they were considering going back. And Matt Booty puts out a good argument here that they need to be able to convince folks that it is a viable service. It is a service that is worth investing in and surviving going forward, which is why they are keeping those games day and date on Xbox Game Pass. So really interesting stuff here. And again, the first sentence is what's going to be the most damning, I think, against Xbox if people are looking at this. But you have to also think about what context was this in. Is this Matt Booty here saying, let's go out and buy everything? We just saw them looking to buy Sega, Bungie. They had a whole mergers and acquisition watch list. Is this him saying, let's use all of our money. Let's go buy everything so Sony can't get any more content onto their platform and we, that will hurt them in the long run? Or was it him just saying, listen, we have this ability. Let's take that risk and go out and make acquisitions to be able to continue to compete with Sony and make sure that we do have the best platform out there from a content base, especially with subscription services. And it does make more and more sense. You put all of the pieces of the puzzle together, especially as we are hearing the stuff coming out from Phil Spencer talking about PlayStation being a hostile competitor and literally doing anything they can to make sure content doesn't show up on the Xbox platform. You have Xbox sitting there looking at that and thinking, we need to do something if we want to be serious within the gaming industry. I think at this point where it was two years after they had announced Xbox Game Pass, it was at a time where people were questioning the Xbox ecosystem and the Xbox platform and whether they were going to take gaming seriously or were they going to just drop out of the race they obviously looked at everything, looked at the numbers and decided we're going to take gaming seriously and we have the ability to do it. And then they started off with Series X, Series S, the Bethesda acquisition, now the Activision Blizzard acquisition. And to be completely honest, I don't think Xbox is even close to being done with acquisitions. Are they going to go out and are they going to buy another big publisher like Activision? Probably not, probably not nearly as big, but I think they are going to continue to try to bolster the studios that they have in order to have continuous content because the main draw of Game Pass and cloud gaming is first party day and date. There are amazing games in there, indie games, third party games. But other than that, the draw is first party day and date. And they know they can get themselves to a point where they're releasing a first party game every couple of months. It will be very hard for other players to come in there and beat and pass Xbox Game Pass because they just won't have the content that Xbox is striving to have. So we'll see what happens. We'll see... What this all looks like going forward, as we know, there is a big week coming up where I'm sure a lot more information will be coming out, but I will leave the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.
Thank you.